Hello, my name is Maria Schmitz. Let's dive into the topic, shall we? The cultural movement that is Rastafari is perhaps the boldest statement of rejection of the values associated with European supremacy to have been made anywhere in the new world. As I already mentioned in my video on Rastafarianism and Caribbean cultural identity, Rex Nettleford describes this movement as one of Plantation America's most authentic expressions of organic revolt inappropriate if anguished response to some of the deepest social forces that have shaped and still determine the discrepancies of Caribbean society. Dread Talk continues, it would be more than surprising if the effect of the movement had not been felt in the literature of the region. The language is the organ of the movement. As this video is about Dread Talk, let me give you some of the major meanings of the word dread in the rest of Aryan perspective. A person with dreadlocks, a serious idea or thing, dangerous situation or person, the dreadful power of the holy, experientially awesome, fearful confrontation of a people with a primordial but historically denied racial selfhood. In her book Dread Talk, Velma Pollard sets up three categories in which to examine the lexicon of DT, Dread Talk. Category one, in which known items bear new meanings. For example, chalice is a pipe for smoking ganja. Also, dread is one of the more significant words in the rest of vocabulary. It belongs to category one in the sense that its primary meanings are not the same as those accorded it in standard English. Category two, in which words bear the weight of their phonological implications, for example, to downpress means to oppress. Category three, I words, yeah, pronominal function of I, for example, I, I man, I meaning me, and the initial syllable replacement in some words with the letter I. To dwell on I for a moment, the Rastafarians believe that um, me connotes subservience or objectification of the human individual whereas I is thought to emphasize the, the subjective and individual character of a person. As a singular, the speaker chooses I and I to signify the ever-presence of Ja, which stands for Jehovah. As a plural, the choice of I and I signifies the existence of a spirituality and metaphysically intimate relationship among the speaker, other individuals present or spoken of, and Ja. So, let's welcome Lorda Goodison once again. And you might say, well, what does she have to do with this? Well, she wrote the last poem in the book, Dread Talk. It's called The Road of the Dread. Drawing on the language and symbolism of everything from Pokumania to Rastafarianism, Lorna Goodison's poems explore the belief in the power of language to actually do things, to cleanse, to heal, and strengthen. She also worked on a series of poems that deal with Jamaican street people, as she calls them. In the poems, she concerns herself with the facelessness and suffering, so too in the soliloquy of the rest man, in the road of the dread. It is quite common in Jamaica to see Rastafarians walking on the street and talking to themselves. So I see in this poem more of a soliloquy than of anything else. That the road no pave like any other black face road. It no have no definite color and it fence two sides with live barbed wire and no look for no milepost for measure you walking and no take no stone as dead or familiar. For some time you pass a thing you know as, call it stone again, and is a snake ready to squeeze you, kill you, or is a dead man taking possessions, tease you. Then the place them you feel is resting place because time before that you welcome like rain, got it again? Bad dog, bad face, turn for drive you underground, when you have no light for walk and you find so that many you meet who say them understand is only from the mouth them talk. One good thing though. 
That same treatment makes you walk untold distance, but to continue, you have to walk far away from the wicked. Upon the same road, your sister, sometimes you drink your salt, sweat for water, for you sure say at least that no poison. And bread? You picture it and chew it accordingly, and sometimes you're surprised to know how that full man belly. In standard English, that road is not paved like any other black-faced road. It has no definite color. On this same road, sister, sometimes you drink your salt sweat for water, for you are sure that at least that is not poisoned, and bread, you picture it and chew it accordingly, and sometimes you are surprised to know how that fills your stomach. No definite color, no beginning and no ending. It just named day or night. as how you feel, to call it. Then why I tread it, brother? Well, make I tell you about the day them when the father sent some little bird that swallowed flute for thrill me, and when him instruct the sun for smile upon me first, and the sky calm like sea when it sleep and a breeze like a laugh follow me. Or the man find a stream that pure like baby mine and the water ease down your throat and quiet you inside. And better still when you meet another traveller who have flour and you have water and man and man make bread together. And them time there the road runs straight and sure like a young horse that can't tire. And you catch a glimpse of the end through the water in your eye. I won't tell you what I spy, but it's for that alone I tread this road. So once again in standard English. And better still when you meet another traveller who has flour and you have water and two people make bread together. At that time, the road runs straight and sure like a young horse that can't be made tired and you catch a glimpse of the end through the tears in your eyes. I won't tell you what I spy, but it's with that alone I tread this road.